A lot of conversations happen about what is going to happen in 2024. What's in store for 2024 is the major question we're getting from a lot of our clients. A lot of individuals seeing that rates are starting to come back down. Uh, obviously, not to the levels that we saw just a few short years ago, but enough to maybe move the needle for a lot of these buyers that were on the sidelines. And obviously, as home prices continue to soften, uh, that does lead a lot of Canadians who are qualified, ready to go out there and buy with an option and a decision to make. And as we embark on what to expect in 2024 on this week's episode, we'll be talking about that and more. So once again, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for clicking. It's Friday, Finance Fridays, and I'm your host, Anthony, with In Touch Mortgage Solutions. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, hit the like button, and don't forget to share the video and leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts on what is expected or what we can expect or observe for 2024. So as we've looked at 2023 now, we've sort of, you know, rounded it out. A lot of interesting things have happened in 2023. You know, we look to the U.S., we look at what happened, obviously, in the earlier part of the year with some of these collapses with some of these banks and how interesting this has been for the bond market. And we've definitely seen some volatility there, something we talked about uh, on numerous episodes. And we talked about the bond yields, you know, coming off their highs last week when we did our monthly mortgage rate update. But the bond market has continued to level off and it's beginning to show some more signs that things might improve in 2024. So what are some of those indicators that we're seeing right now that are happening? Well, first and foremost, if we look to the U.S., their most current rate decision to round out 2023, we heard from chair of the U.S. Federal Reserve, the most influential central bank in the world, the U.S., and we heard from Jerome Powell, basically a very dovish conversation, meaning that, you know, it was very soft. It was very, hey, we're thinking that we might have to cut rates as, you know, they've looked to their, uh, you know, voting members, their uh Got their governing council, so to speak. You know, here in Canada, we have our deputy governor, we have our governor and the governing council in the US, they have their voting members. And when they plot these all out on their dot charts, uh, you know, they sort of got a consensus that there should be around three potential rate cuts coming uh, on the US side of things for uh, 2024. Now, when that's going to happen or if that's going to happen is a major question, but it definitely moved the needle with these bond yields. We saw a major uh, a dip last week and obviously these fixed rate mortgages are starting to roll off a little bit nowhere close to what we saw just a few short years ago and I don't think we're going to get back to rates that are sub three percent at least not in the short term uh, maybe that's something down the pipeline depending on how resilient uh, the U.S. economy is or how poorly uh, the Canadian economy uh, will be heading into 2024 obviously talking about that recession so the U.S. obviously indicating uh, potential rate cuts. Some economists, some bond analysis and movers and shakers in the bond market are predicting that there could be more rate cuts. I think the bigger question is, is if all this debt, these trillions of dollars uh, basically uh, come to renewal, well, who's going to basically pay for it? And more importantly, if they have to issue new bonds, well, are they going to have buyers for those bonds? Uh, or are they going to have to maybe turn on those printing presses again? And we know how bad uh, that potential uh, conversation could get. And that could lead potentially to inflation being around for a little bit longer or running uh, a little bit hotter uh, than expected. Obviously, both central banks, both governments want to see inflation hit 2%. That's the golden number. But they have that bandwidth between 1% to 3%. So we have to keep that in mind. Uh, but obviously, inflation in the U.S. is coming down. In Canada, we just got those data points earlier this week, and it did basically come in level to with October at 3.1%. Many economists, many predicted it would come back at 29 uh, Obviously, why is this elevated? Uh, we definitely saw you know, travel and tourism sort of be the bigger mover on why that inflation number is up. In addition to mortgage interest costs and you know, shelter costs, obviously rents are very expensive. So that's the biggest uh, factor, but we saw some changes in food and oil gas prices sort of play down. So this brings us back to the conversation around the Bank of Canada, right? Last week on Friday, 
We heard from uh, Governor Tiff Mecklem. He was even being interviewed by BNN. And, you know, to summarize his conversation, there's a few things that they pointed out. Right? Number one is bringing more transparency and clarity to Canadians uh, through their press conferences and obviously through their uh, statement reports and ensuring that they actually do a live press conference following each one of the eight uh, Bank of Canada announcements that we can expect next year. And that should help Canadians better understand what the Bank of Canada wants to see from Canadians. Remember, we've talked about this early on in the year. We talked about Canadian spending, how the Bank of Canada wants to have Canadians in a position where they can't spend. And that's how monetary policy works. Uh, by now, we should be very familiar that the higher the rates are, the tighter the economy gets, the tighter Canadians feel, the less, uh, more sensitive we are to rates. Uh, and obviously consumer spending, right? When you have to renew your mortgage into a higher rate or you're paying more for certain things, there's less money at the end of the month to spend in other segments of the market. So making Canadians feel poor is obviously what's uh, on the Bank of Canada's agenda. And obviously even having that conversation around their monetary policy, obviously talking uh, you know, in not so many words about what we can expect in 2024 as they transition, right? They're using this word 2024 is going to be the year of transition. And, you know, that is open for interpretation. Obviously, you can say transition. Is the bank going to pivot? Is this the uh, TSN turning point, as I call it, where the, and we know the U.S. Fed is about to pivot uh, because, you know, they're indicating three rate cuts, but the Bank of Canada is playing the strong game and saying, hey, we're not talking about rate cuts just yet. I think it's a little too early, but I believe that's aggressive language. I believe the Bank of Canada knows that if the U.S. cuts, they have very little option but to sort of follow suit. Maybe not to the same degree, but they have to because if the Bank of Canada doesn't potentially drop their rates uh, to keep them somewhat in line with the U.S. policy rate, well, then we're going to be importing inflation. That's the bottom line is is it's going to make the dollar less attractive. It's going to weaken our dollar in comparison to the greenback. And this is going to have some major ramifications for import and export, obviously, right? So that is another conversation that we can anticipate, but most likely aggressive language, keeping the Bank of Canada at bay. I don't think we're going to see any rate hikes in January. The Bank of Canada is up against the wall. That's sort of what I see in store for 2024. I think we're going to see some pauses potentially by the end of 2024, unless we enter a massive recession and talking about that unemployment, that unemployment rate has ticked up to 5.8. We're definitely seeing weakness in the job vacancy numbers. Huge conversation point, right? Because we're bringing in so many Canadians that we're just not creating enough jobs. And so they're coming here with the aspirations to build a better life, but they're maybe not able to find employment. They're definitely having a hard time finding a property to not only buy when that time comes, but to rent and to rent at a reasonable price. And that could lead many to basically pack up and say we're done or move to a different province that's more affordable. Uh, and we're definitely seeing that interprovincial migration happening. But the reality is, is this major conversation around immigration. So to be very clear, I said this was something that was maybe minutely touched upon. And for some of our viewers that may have saw or watched the Pierre Polyab video, uh, the housing hell. Uh, this was a very interesting, you know, sort of 15 minute uh, conservative plot to, you know, sort of defame the, the existing government. And as I said, keeping political matters aside, I do uh, tend to agree with a lot of the conversation around what Pierre's trying to do. And yes, he's pointing out nothing but facts. Okay. So we can't take that away from him. Um, there are definitely some nuances that have been left off the table. And one of those things is the conversation around immigration. And as I said, in, in an effort to not paint themselves as anti-immigration. They're avoiding this conversation. There's nothing wrong with saying, look, we need immigration in this country. We all agree. We need to replace the aging workforce and we need to create new uh, tax revenue. We need to have more people here to pay taxes, to help build and grow the economy. There's no hiding the fact. Uh, and the, But the fact should be that we need to really curtail this immigration to allow individuals to come here, find a place to a, live, work, uh, and we need to find a place for them to, you know, basically call home, right? And even though a lot of these individuals, and even according to a Bank of Canada analysis on inflation and immigration that was recently published as a study, you know, it points to how these new to Canada individuals, you know, they're saving more. They're, they're much different than maybe previous generations. I don't like using our, my parents 
and you know we're first generation right so when they came they came with different circumstances uh they didn't have the funds they didn't have the job skills uh you know that a lot of them picked up a shovel and they went to work right and now the times have changed right the, the amount and level of immigration that's coming into the country according to the statistics you know we're seeing more healthcare workers we're seeing definitely more doctors and nurses which we need right our healthcare system is pretty much for the pits to say the least and it's only going to get worse if we don't really address those concerns so you know we're not bringing in skilled trades that are going to build these 3.5 million new homes that we're going to need by 2025 and in just a couple of weeks in a week or so we're going to be you know in 2024 and that gives us six years to meet this target of 3.5 million i just don't see it happening uh, even if we have all these Airbnbs come back to the market, you know, it's a 240,000 units, you know, a lot of those individuals, they may be forced to sell. Uh, condo market's taking a little bit of a bath right now, in, especially in Toronto GTA. But a lot of these condos might go into long-term rental, right? So they go from short-term to long-term, which may alleviate, move the needle slightly, but not enough. We have Sean Fraser coming out with these uh, particular catalogs. I don't know if you saw this or heard of this, but basically post-World War II. We got all these um, homes that were required to be built from the returning soldiers from the war. And, you know, yeah, Canada, uh, Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation sort of launched this incentive initiative and, you know, build these cookie cutter homes that, you know, even my grandparents had, right? So I know what they're trying to do. They're just trying to bring that inventory. But if they don't find a more resourceful way to build them or find the people to build these homes, we're definitely going to be in a major predicament. And it's the conversation around the most solvable but unsolvable problem in this country is housing, right? And the end of the day, um, I believe that even no matter what political party comes to the forefront, can a new government, you know, they can tackle a lot of things, they can make things a lot better, but it takes time for those impacts, those intended consequences to sort of play out. And I don't think you can fix a problem that's been 10, 20, 30 years in the making in, you know, four to eight years. And I give them the credit if they can make that change. Sean Fraser from the Liberal government, uh, as I said, keeping politics aside, credit should be due where he's coming to the forefront with these incentives to build multi-family homes, not just single family, but multi, uh, multiple rental properties, you know, give builders a blueprint to build these homes faster, more effectively, and still give Canadians the opportunity to buy their own home. If they don't want to go through the cattle, that's fine. So, you know, we have to look at Mark Miller, what's happening with immigration. This is a major question. And it comes back down to these politicians should not be ashamed to come out to the forefront and say, look, we love immigration. We just need to fix how we're doing it. Maybe slow it down a little bit. Something we've talked about on this channel. Because what you're going to do is you're going to burn the bridges with a lot of these people that are coming here and not finding what they were promised. And that will obviously impact immigration levels for today and in the future. So all those things in considered, as I said, we have all these major push factors. Now, what's pulling things in for Canadians, especially when it comes to homes and, and getting out to pre-approve themselves for a purchase, is that the fixed rate mortgages are coming down. There's some light at the end of the tunnel that the Bank of Canada may be cutting rates at some point in 2024. Can't tell you when. Could definitely say it's not going to be in the first quarter of 2024. They're going to hold off as long as they can. And at least by the end of 2024, at least or when the U.S. does it, that's when the Bank of Canada is going to really have to uh, make that amends with themselves and say, hey, we got to cut these rates. But I really think fixed rates are coming down. More Canadians are deciding, hey, I've been on the sidelines now since probably 2022 waiting for an opportunity. The opportunity hasn't come. Home prices haven't gone down as much as we thought they were going to go down. That's even echoed by the Deputy Governor, Carolyn Rogers, in a conversation just a few weeks ago or a month ago, uh, where she said, you know, we, we expected higher interest rates to really play into the housing market. It just didn't have that desired consequence. And it either shows that the Canadian uh, housing market is really resilient or the banks and the government have put in plan many of these mortgage charters to really keep and bolster uh, Canadians to stay in their homes a little bit longer, right? Kicking that can down the road. So with all these rates coming down, you're going to see a lot of Canadians who have variable rate mortgages find that fine line, that equilibrium of where they're going to lock in and, you know, be able to manage that payment. You're definitely going to see Canadians that are renewing into cheaper rates. You know, instead of being around $1,700 difference on average, this is sort of the consensus, you know, it might be around 1200 bucks, right? Or it might be a thousand bucks, depending on what that rate is. We're seeing rates come down. And as more and more Canadians renew, 2024 is going to be a big year, so will 2025. Uh, you know, the Bank of Canada knows how many mortgages are approaching renewal, how this mortgage renewal cliff could play out, but they have to figure it out. 
and I believe fixed rate mortgages will move the needle. That will sort of put the opposite pressure. A while ago, we talked about how fixed rate mortgages that were elevated are going to put do a lot of the tightening for the Bank of Canada. This could do the opposite. It could loosen uh, for the Bank of Canada, which could relieve a lot of the pressures. And obviously, it's too soon to tell. I think we have to look at everything in, 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 you know, in hindsight. It's easy, always better to see things. But when it comes to making predictions or what's in store for 2024, I can tell you, if rates come down, we're definitely seeing a huge amount of volume come in for pre-approvals. A lot of Canadians looking to get back into the market. That is something that we're seeing. Now, it's not pandemonium. It's not like 2021. Uh, but, you know, you have those isolated clients that are coming back. They're coming out of the, the woodwork saying, hey, I want to get that pre-approval. I want to put an offer. I saw a place. Uh, I want to get out there and purchase a home before I have to start competing amongst other homes with other buyers at the same price point. And by the time it comes out in the media, and I always say this to clients and to viewers, you know, if CBC News came out tomorrow and said, now is the time to buy a home, what do you think would happen with market sentiment? What would happen with consumer sentiment? Would a lot of people yield their advice? A lot of people might say, hey, no. Maybe some would say yes. Obviously, it's very hard to tell, but I think uh, we have to be very cautious. We're not telling anybody to go out there and buy a home. We're saying get pre-approved. When you're qualified and ready to make a decision, that's when you should do it. 2024 might be an opportunity, uh, depending on what happens with home prices. Just remember, when home prices rates go up, home prices tend to come down. When interest rates tend to come down, home prices either stay the same or go up as more demand. And we have lots of demand, especially as we start to see um, potentially less inventory hit the market as all these projects, these construction projects sort of get canceled or repurposed. Uh, we saw a few projects that was originally supposed to be uh, potentially in the GTA, I should say, um, was supposed to be uh, for, you know, detached homes, but the builder restructured it to go back into towns and semis and high density as opposed to low density. So a lot of conversations happening there. I think that we're definitely going to see fixed rates come down. We're going to see a little bit of energy in the market come the new year, maybe around the spring. If interest rates drop, uh, obviously home prices, we'll see what happens. I think they're going to stay pretty level. I don't think we're going to see much more descent in the home prices especially if interest rates come down. A lot of people take their home off the market uh, because they have high hopes for the spring. And what I want to do is just leave the video here wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays as we end off 2023. We'll see all of you back in the new year. Thanks again for clicking. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.